Hello everyone and welcome. This is the Silent K and today we're going to be playing some Mech HQ as we have been doing. Uh, good afternoon, Varank. Um, <laughs> I'm glad to say that I've influenced somebody into to getting back into HBS. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm ready for Rogue Tech yet. I understand it's uh, significantly more challenging and complicated, but um, maybe eventually uh, we could we could maybe consider trying to do something like that. Um, right off the top, I do have a couple of new subs that I wanted to shout out on YouTube. I got notifications that Jabo Fett and Jay Alexander have uh, have subbed to my uh, YouTube channel. And on Twitch, I've got a Tapper 2K has has joined us. So uh, welcome to the community, you guys. Uh, don't forget, uh, if you'd like to be more active members of the community, there is a link to the Discord on my Twitch channel. Um, with no further ado, let's uh, get back into this. We are uh, currently still on wing on a campaign that's still got about two months left. Uh, our last battle was yesterday, uh, where we were victorious, and honestly, I don't... Oh uh, yeah, this was uh, our lance against a bunch of lights, and um, we ended up not escaping from them, but just destroying them outright uh, entirely. Um, we did have some parts arrive. We've got some more parts. Um, I know you can't see all of these details, but... Um, Basically just I uh, picked up some heat-seeking ammo, some Inferno ammo, uh, smoke ammo, various things like that that might come in handy at some point just to have them on hand. Um, and uh, I need to be my more awesome paint. Uh, if I recall, yeah, we did... Uh, we did lose a little bit of paint on the awesome. Uh, not, not too significantly. Um, the only thing that I did off screen uh, while I was uh, getting set up for today's stream was I noticed that the, the Atlas and I think it was the Orion and the Awesome were in, uh, in the field and I wanted them to be in field workshops so I went ahead and did that uh, just to make our repairs a little bit less challenging. Um, Alright, so let's get started on this Awesome that just needs uh, what 4, 6, 8, 10, 12... 23, 29 points of armory lost, so just shy of two tons. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and get uh, Chris working on, well, let me see here, these are all, these are not all fives for her. We do have a six. Um, but I want because that's a 10 minute repair. I really want Loney doing all of the, the quick and easy repairs so that uh, he can get as much XP as possible, as quick as possible, get a second veteran on the team. Uh, and we do get the seven. Um, what else have we got? We've got, a, we've got some 30 minute jobs here that we can fail without too great of a repercussion. Um, and then I guess uh, I guess B is next in line for the slightly larger do jobs. The um, I'm gonna call that from 60 minutes up. I'm gonna have B doing. Um, and I know I like to be conservative. I usually try to get this target number down to five. I've been doing six, and it's been working out pretty well. Um, so. As long as I guess my texts don't uh, screw me over too many times, we can we can keep shooting for six on the armor, and that is the awesome completely repaired. Happy now. <laughs> um, so let's see. We're actually not using the angler and can't even actually fix that at this point. Um, the atlas. Let's see. We've got some sixes here. Uh, Let's just go ahead and normalize all of these if they're all sixes. Um, all right, and again, having our high XP tech doing the quick and easy job, two points, I'm not worried about it. Um, did I say B? I meant Loney. 
either way. Uh, that is an 8, though. That is losing 20 points of armor on a 5 or less. I don't really like those odds. Um, because uh, we're actually running a little bit low on armor right now. We only have about 400 points in stock. And it says we have 80 on order. Let me double check that. Uh, okay, it looks like 5 lots of armor, which are 5 tons each, or 80 points each. So that should be another 400 points. Should be on the way as of tomorrow. Um, so, kind of want... Where is that at? All right, because Chris is uh, Mrs. Fixit, who gets a, uh, a bonus of one to counteract the plus one for D quality. Uh, so yeah, definitely important to have her doing that. Um, the rest of these all look like sixes. So we'll get uh, B some XP doing some of that. Wait, are these all? Okay, that one's not a B. Uh, or a D, or a C. Go ahead and have Mrs. Fixit do that as well. And then have B. Uh, B do yeah these are all big jobs so that's going to be probably B and Halima doing most of that work um, five minutes left on that for tomorrow um, used up some edge to save 20 points of armor um, man that's a seven I'm, I'm not in I'm not in love with seven. Sixes I found are, are, are I'm finding are pretty much acceptable, but seven is just kind of long odds, if you ask me. Uh, we'll spend 40 minutes on that tomorrow. Today is Friday, so we do actually have um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and technically Monday, so we should have enough time for for all of this. Uh, Stalker needs an LRM and a medium laser. And those are gonna be whole day jobs. Um, like Wolverine, Wolverine's not in our lands, is it? Uh, yes, the Wolverine is one of our active mechs, so we do need to get that one fixed. Um, Maybe could have, should have started on that one earlier because it's mostly little jobs. I see 50 and 55 down here. Um, all right, so 170 minutes left. Well, I don't see any way to make that work out nicely, but we'll go ahead and... And with our last five minutes, I guess... All right, remind me, who do we have? We've got the Atlas, the Awesome, and the Orion are done being fixed. The uh, Archer Mark Three is completely fixed. Uh, the Atlas is being worked on, so the Wolverine is really the only thing left to worry about. So we'll go ahead and give Loney these, these bigger jobs as well so that he can get some of that XP. Uh, we'll have Chris do this because I like 80 minutes working out. Killer of 007, greetings. Hello, how are you? Glad to have you with us. Um, just doing some repairs uh, real quick from the last mission. We got a couple days to knock it out, as I was saying. Um, and then maybe we can start working on things like... Uh, I'm sure we've got some spare medium lasers around here somewhere, don't we? Uh, weapons, medium lasers, yeah, we've got an even half dozen. We can afford to lose one of those on a seven, no big deal. Ah, but we get it in anyways. And then the LRM-10, we also have two of those with one on the way tomorrow. So uh, we'll probably have our green tech replace that as well. Um, and yeah, that looks like... Uh, do we? I could have sworn we had at least one mechanic. Um, let me just sort these real quick the way I like them. Yeah, we've got 
four regular mechanics and a green. So I guess they just have already spent their time for today. Um, and the Savannah Master is going to be done tomorrow anyways, assuming we successfully get those sensors off. Um, the fire starter, I'm honestly, this thing is in really rough shape and I do like fire starters. Um, I'm not such a big fan of the stock basic FS9H uh, fire starter. It, what with the full ton of machine gun ammo and four flamers seems excessive to me, but drop a half a ton of ammo, replace two of the flamers with medium lasers, and you've got yourself a heck of a light mech. So um, that said, this light mech is very much partial right now. It's missing both arms and a leg and a cockpit, which is a pretty big job. Um, well, it's not gone. It just needs to be repaired. Repairing cockpits is generally a pretty difficult job. Uh, so I like to spend a fair amount of time on it because they are expensive. Uh, they run, I want to say two or 300,000 seedles a piece. And it's under S, not C, because it's a standard cockpit. Uh, we have one in stock, and yeah, they're 200,000 C bills. Um, so I kind of want to, if I end up keeping the fire starter, which is what I'm debating myself right now, um, then I definitely want to repair this cockpit on the first try, or at least not, you know, break it. Um, because it's kind of a big, expensive, time consuming part. But on the other hand, it might be a little while before I'm really comfortable fielding light mix. Um, and we can get a cool 2.3 million off of this, which would increase our fundage by almost 50%. Uh, Jenner, I don't feel that way about. I'm going to put legs on this Jenner. I love Jenners, especially the 7... So the 7F that doesn't have the SRM, just has the more armor. So again, quick and easy refit, uh, turns uh, a good mech into a great mech. But the fire starter, I think we want the money instead. So we are going to sell that and it's done. Well, Hermes 2, honestly, is another 3 million. It doesn't have great damage output. It's decent speed, decent armor. It's not my favorite mech. Um, but this being a Mark II, uh, we have already modified it to a degree. Uh, might be worth holding on to, yeah. Uh, the Griffin. Um, Griffins are okay. Um, they're better, in my opinion, than Shadowhawks, but not as good as Wolverines for the most part. It does have good solid damage output and good mobility and good armor. Um, it is a little uh, hot if it tries to run the PPC and the LRMs, um, but the Wolverine is just better. It has the autocannon, the medium laser, and SRM, so potentially a damage output of 22 with um, none of the drawbacks. It doesn't overheat. It uh, has the same armor, the same mobility, so I pre generally prefer the Wolverine to the Griffin. And we can get another 4.5 million if we sell this, I'm probably not going to use it. So, yeah. Um, so that puts us at 12 million in the bank, which is a much more comfortable place to be than where we were. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, let's see. The archer cannot be repaired. Uh, the second stalker. It needs an arm, it needs a head, so it's not something that we can just knock out uh, in the middle of this contract. Our, our techs are just uh, spread a little too thin right now, but um, eventually this could be a huge asset, so I'm going to hold on to that. Um, trouble is... Um, you know what? Instead of having my green tech replace that LRM on the other stalker tomorrow, I'm gonna have my green tech mothball this one and have a regular probably do that. Uh, but with that said, um, all of our tech time is taken up. We don't have any battles, so it's time to advance the day. Uh, yes, I know I'm not maintaining everything. 
All right, so from the top, uh, we did perform maintenance on this APC. Uh, and APCs tend to have very few parts being as light as they are. Uh, we're not doing a great job of, uh, of maintaining it, but stabilizers are, are easy enough to replace. Uh, heat sinks, that LRM-10, some ammo, smoke ammo, uh, sniper ammo, cool. Uh, we did get the sensors off the Savannah Master, which means the only thing left on it is this medium laser that we um, kind of sort of broke. So uh, we can sell that for basically the cost of a medium laser. Um, so let's see. Um, we did fix the armor on the Atlas. We failed to fix the armor on the Atlas, so there's one repair we're going to have to fix up. Uh, we got the armor on the Wolverine. We've got uh, the Rifleman Mark II in, uh, what is that, about seven days, I think. Uh, we found some more ammo is going to be coming in. Uh, Giovanni Alexander uh, spent an edge to find some smoke ammo for an SRM-6. Uh, earned an XP for finding some Ultra Auto Cannon 5 ammo. Uh, all right, so, um, hangar, yes. Um, Go general just uh, because. Okay, so uh, the stalker number two, the one that needs a head, we're gonna go ahead and mothball that and we're gonna use our green tech for that. And then the Jenner uh, is also kind of lower priority because I tend to spend, you know, a couple of days a piece uh, putting arms and legs back on. Because um, even, even a veteran tech spending times four time on replacing a limb is I think a seven up. Uh, and that's um, that's in a transport bay, which those are in short supply. So I might just go ahead. Uh, well, all of these guys already have some of their time taken. We're going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to line up a second job for my green tech, Kazuko and see how that works. I'm guessing, yeah, uh, Kazuko spent 480 minutes mothballing the stalker and will finish tomorrow. Spent Carpathus, Carpathus, Carpathice uh, is now following. So, uh, hey, welcome to the community. Glad to have you. Um, so yeah, shout out there. Um, glad to have you along. Carp, all right, works for me. Uh, so Kazuko, presumably, is going to spend tomorrow finishing mothballing the Stalker and then the next two days mothballing the Jenner. Um, and that gives us uh, all of our regular and veteran techs uh, to work on other things, like fixing the armor on this atlas that didn't get done yesterday. Uh, on a 6, we got that done, so that's cool. And eventually we're going to replace this arm. Um, but honestly, if it gets destroyed, we're only out a medium laser and some actuators, so I don't feel like it's that big of a deal. Uh, and then we can have... Uh, who do we want working on this? Um, well, if we have Chris replace the LRM-10, there's no chance of breaking it, but we have a couple of spares. I'd kind of rather give the XP to Loni. Let's go ahead and do that. That'll be done tomorrow. And we've got some armor on the Wolverine. We can roll higher than a four. And then uh, I guess Veronica can do that. All right, so that is essentially all of the mechs that we're using fully repaired, uh, with the exception of the Alice's arm. Um, so that actually gives us a couple of days that we could start working on this Xanthos, perhaps? Um, it's, it is a primitive mech, but we did get some primitive armor in. And it is a 100-tonner, and it does have the autocannon, large laser. I mean, for a primitive, it's pretty impressive. So um, the only thing that really, well, it's got a busted engine, it's got a busted gyro. Uh, 
it's going to need a front left leg and a cockpit. Do we have any front legs? Uh, we do actually. We have a spare left and right. And that was the left. So let's go ahead. Go ahead and order another, just one of those, in case um, in case we fail putting it on, or in case you know we fix it and it gets busted. I want to have a, a spare on hand, anyways. Um, I'm big on keeping you know spare mech parts on hand, just because they're so cheap and so useful, and I don't want to have to wait for them when I need them. Uh, but in the meantime, I think. Let's go ahead and start stripping parts out of that front left leg. Front left leg. <laughs> I say parts, I mean part. Alright, and now we can put this back into repair mode. Back to all. Uh, right here. Just to double check. Yes, impossible. So we're going to scrap this and go ahead and set that for as much time as we've got. Even still, it's an 8 because it's in the field workshop, so uh, that's a 5 though. That's 3 days of worth of work. That's Sunday, Monday. I don't think I want to tie up my best tech until Tuesday because then what if we have a battle on Monday, you know? Um, let me just go ahead and set these. I like them. Uh, 800 minutes though, we can get started on that and it'll be done on Monday. So there's that. And then we'll have, I guess, what happens? Five, but that's the center torso. You guys know that uh, on center torsos, once that becomes irreparably damaged, there's no saving the mech. So I kind of want to hold off on that. Let's just uh, knock out some of this primitive armor that we can fix. We did not buy enough primitive armor. Um, uh, yeah, we don't even have any on order. So I'm thinking maybe, I know it's not 80 points a lot the way standard armor is. I think it's less, but uh, yeah, we can uh, switch out with one of the other mechs since they're done getting repaired. Oh, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, I have forgotten about that. Uh, that's under status. So we've got just a quick rundown to remind myself. Uh, the Mackie and the Emperor are not actually taking a base, they're in mothballs. We've got the Stalker in Bay 1. Um, we've got the Rifleman in Bay 2. Yeah. Um, two. We can... Sorry, I'm just... Just kind of spaced out for a second there. Uh, we can put the Mark III Archer in the field workshop. We can put the Xanthos in its place in the transport bay. Uh, and that actually does give us a target number of four with a regular tech on that center torso. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that. Good catch, thanks for pointing that out. Um, gyro, that's still gonna be veteran job. Um, the cockpit, however, I'm less worried about that. Uh, I'm also less worried about tying up one of my regular techs until Tuesday. So, yeah, we'll have Halima start working on that. And it looks like, other than that, we're just about all the repairs that we need to do before we advance to the next day. And we didn't get the pop-up, which is... Uh, I deal with that pop-up, the unmaintained units pop-up, so frequently and so often that it's kind of a relief to not have it come up. Just hit next day and it's the next day. 
no one nagging at me saying, by the way, you know your mechs are falling apart. Uh, so we got some ammo in for LRMs and long toms and snipers and inferno ammo and heat seeking ammo. So cool. We did get that uh, spare front left leg in for the Xanthos. Uh, we also got the first five tons of primitive armor in. Uh, we got the center torso fixed, still working on the engine in the cockpit. We did get the LRM-10 in the stalker, uh, which means, if I'm not mistaken, this thing is ready to roll. Fully fixed, completely repaired, fresh coat of paint and everything. So, are we going to throw it immediately into the fray? Uh, we're currently rocking a 380 ton lance. Um, the only thing I could replace the stalker with would be the atlas. That would give us 15 tons to work with. Um, what would we do with those 15 tons? We don't. We don't have a 90 tonner, do we? No. Oh well, no, we've got. We do have the Emperor, which is a 90 tonner, but it's got two auto cannons and three lasers. Uh, honestly, I think the Orion is just a, a better mech overall. It's got a bigger auto cannon, two lasers, SRMs, and LRMs. Um, as well as 231 out armor versus ooh, 273. But this thing is tough. It just doesn't have as much damage output. Also, it's slower. Um, so I don't really want to replace the Orion with the Emperor. Um, what we could do, we could replace the Atlas with one Stalker and that would free up 15 tons and then we could replace the Archer with the other Stalker if we had the other one ready. <clears throat> um, but for right now it looks like the only option that we have is replacing the Atlas with the Stalker and just going in 15 tons under Assault Max. Um, which, I mean, might be something, so let me think about this. We've got, <clears throat> we've got one more medium laser on the Atlas, because the Stalker has four, and I'm only counting the forward-facing ones. So that's one medium laser in favor of the Atlas. Uh, the Atlas has one SRM-6, the Stalker has two, so kind of counterbalances that. We've got an LRM-20 on the Atlas versus two tens on the uh, Stalker. Again, kind of balances out. Um, we've got an Autocannon 10 versus two large lasers, which honestly, as long as you've got the heat sinks to use it, the two large lasers are kind of stronger. Uh, uh, oh, hey, Lark. I uh, didn't know you were in the chat. Um, Good to see you. Uh, welcome back. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really thinking about it because uh, the Stalker has this combat computer quirk right here that effectively gives it 24 heat sinks. Um, and ultimately, what I'd like to do is replace the heat sinks it has with double heat sinks. Uh, I have a, a variant of the Stalker that I've been using uh, in my in my side game that just replaces the heat sinks with double heat sinks uh, and adds some armor and it is amazing. It can literally alpha strike with all of these guns and be in, in perfectly fine con uh, heat levels. Um, yeah, let's let's go ahead and uh, so let's see. Produces produced heat by four, yeah. So you can fire ML and SML. Wait, S. SML? Oh, small laser. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have any small lasers. Um, but 24 heat, that means you can, at long range, you can fire both large lasers and both LRMs. And that's you know, heat neutral. Or at close range, you can fire 12 heat worth of medium lasers and 8 heat from the SRM-6s and have, you know, a couple points left over, uh, even if you're running. So yeah, Stalker 
versus Atlas. And normally, you know, I'm of the mindset that bigger is better. And even with this custom Atlas, which, you know, dropped the Autocannon 20 to a 10 so that it's got better, uh, better damage outside of nine hexes, um, and also turns one of the rear facing medium lasers to the front. So it does have the five medium lasers, which is very potent. But I think, I think we're gonna try rocking the uh, Stalker. So we are going to swap Murdoch over to that and then add it to here. So again, uh, we're only running 365 tons now, but I feel like it's potentially a, a more potent lance altogether. And it also gives us the freedom when we get another stalker up, we can put uh, Frederick into, uh, into that and improve our, our outlook even better. Or if we, oh, uh, I already talked about the, the Emperor and how I, I don't think it's superior to the Orion, but, um, or we could replace the Wolverine with a 70 tonner. There are a lot of good 70 tonners out there. I'm especially fond of Warhammers and Archers. We do have an Archer in storage. As a matter of fact, uh, this is the Mark II Archer, which um, replaces the two rear facing medium lasers with heat sinks. So it can like, stand and fire the LRMs without overheating at least. Um, that said, would I rather have two LRM 20s or, yeah, um, we're gonna go ahead and I think we're gonna replace the Wolverine with the other archer. And uh, I know it's, the, the Mark II is not as good a mech as the Mark III, the Mark III having the, the double heat sinks. But I do think that the Mark II Archer is uh, better than uh, a standard Wolverine, so. All right, there we go. And yes, I know your arm is damaged. So was the Atlas's. <laughs> um, so we're back up to our 380 tons. Uh, we're running three heavies and two assaults. <laughs> so that's a pretty beefy lance. Um, yes, stalkers are amazing. I love them. Uh, we'll go ahead. Have Loni put some primitive armor on the Xanthos. Six. Six is rough. I think I'm going to wait for my veteran tech before I try and fix that gyro, because that, that's something... Talking about cockpits are expensive, gyros are so much more expensive. But I will go ahead and we'll have B work on this leg for a couple of days. I know it's an eight, I know it's unlikely, but we do have two spares. So I'm a little less worried about that. And I think we are ready to roll. Let's see what Monday gives us. We have a new scenario, Probe Defender, will occur tomorrow. Uh, real quick, let me check the personnel market. We do have a green mech warrior. Uh, she comes with a Valkyrie, which it's a decent light fire support mech, but for a light mech, it's not very fast. For a fire support mech, all it really has is an LRM-10. Um, also, I do consider it to be a little unfair to hire a mech warrior and just get a mech for basically free. So uh, I tend to avoid doing that. Uh, we got maintenance on the thumper, which stabilizer down to F and the engine, engine is up to A, so that's good. And the stabilizer, we can always replace that if it gets broken or you know fix it for XP. Uh, we got a right torso in, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even remember what right torso we were expecting. Um, but um, yeah, it looks like we're pretty well set for the parts that we're planning on using. Some more smoke and heat seeking ammo, some more armor, 
Still working on the engine. Failed to replace the cockpit. Okay, well. Uh, we're going to need that. So we'll have Veronica Hurst spend... I'm okay with her spending three days on that. She's not our best tech. Um, still working on that front left leg. <clears throat> uh, rifleman in, I think, like six days? Seven days. Five days is 2,400 minutes. That's 800 more. So yeah, that's definitely seven days. Uh, Mothball the Jenner. Um, okay, yeah, so... Oh, started mothballing the Jenner. I see. Uh, I didn't read that right. Uh, so yeah, that worked out the way I wanted. I <laughs> had never tested that, so I wanted to, to see how it goes. But I'd never like lined up more than one mech to be mothballed by the same tech. And yes, they will just do it consecutively. So if I wanted to like mothball every mech I have, I could just give it all to one tech, and they'd just do one every other day. Uh, so that's good to know, for what it's worth. Um, in the meantime, actually, since we're not using the Atlas anymore, let's go ahead and get that lined up to be mothballed, and then the Wolverine as well. Uh, we are... Uh, uh, mothball, that's what we're looking for. Alright, so our green tech is going to spend like the next five days just mothballing mechs that we're not using, which is cool. And obviously, you know, we can cancel that anytime. Uh, so in the meantime, uh, about this probe mission that just popped up, that is going to be tomorrow. That is us and a veteran pilot and a wasp versus a veteran pilot and a Vulcan. We've got a wasp, a trebuchet, a wasp, Wolverine, Locust, Wolverine, Saracen, Scorpion. And being a probe mission, we're only playing to 25%. <clears throat> um, we've got flatlands, we've got some trees, we've got daylight, but moderate rain. Uh, and if I'm remembering right, moderate rain has an effect on visibility and piloting roles. I couldn't tell you offhand exactly how much it is. Um... But yeah, I think, other than trying to work on this Xanthos, which we're going to wait for a slightly more opportune time to work on that gyro, because I feel like we're about to be a little busy, I think we are just about ready to get into this mission. Uh, yes, scenario is today. We've got maintenance on our Vedette, which actually went pretty well. We've got... Uh, quality up on a stabilizer and the turret lock. So that's cool. Uh, ammo arrived. We did get the engine fixed on the Xanthos, still working on the cockpit. Uh, we did use up one of our spares on that front left leg. Oh well. Uh, let me just order one more. And that'll be here in two days, which is fine because it'll take two days to put the, the current spare on. And we are, I think, just about ready to roll. Um, they do outnumber us. Uh, and for the most part, they've got a couple veterans. They've got a 3-3 three, three here, a couple 3-5s. But I think, generally speaking, we do have better pilots than them. So I'm okay with the rain, because I think that gives us the advantage in this case. I know I still need to fix my uh, my my uh, save folder. All right. Um, so uh, Vernita not using her advantages. The hopping jack and small pilot do not apply to an to an archer. Uh, French has edge. Um, Petra has edge and multitasker, which could come in handy on that Orion. You know, fire the autocannon and the LRMs at one target, the lasers and the SRMs at the other. Uh, Fred Jones with the weapon specialist on those PPCs, which effectively gives him a gunnery one with most of his weapons. And we've got Murdoch with a gunnery specialization in, was it energy? I honestly don't remember. Was he a 
energy specialist. Or was he power cannon specialist? Energy, okay. Uh, which works out really well for the stalker with the two large lasers and the four mediums. Uh, not so much with the LRMs and SRMs, but um, that's the downside of that perk. So we've got uh, one advantage in the Wolverine. We've got a melee specialist, so that's something to watch out for because it... Um, I must have been thinking of something else. I thought it had um, battle fists. Uh, okay, so we've got a melee specialist in the Wolverine. Uh, the big boys to watch out for are the Trebuchet with the 3-3 three, three pilot, the Wolverine with the 4-5 pilot, and the other Wolverine with the 4-6 pilot are the big point value guys. Now they've got 8,075 points, um, so which means that we need to deal a little over 2,000 points of BV to them. So if we could knock out, say, this trebuchet and a harasser, for example, that would do it. Uh, so the trebuchet needs to be our main target. Um, we're starting in the west, they're starting in the east. We can expect the map to look something like this, which honestly to me is just about the ideal uh, battlefield. It gives you enough cover to use um, but not enough to get in the way of like clear visibility. We are going to be fighting in the rain, which I th oh mud. I saw mud. Uh, we have lost initiative for deployment phase. Um, all right. Uh, let's go ahead. And, oh, I forgot. It's going to be. Two turns, three turns, three turns. Uh, sorry guys, that was, um, let me just do that again. Because uh, that's the thing that it automatically does when you're in the, uh, in the recon stance is it'll uh, penalize your, your deployment based on your speed. And I do not abide that because when we're doing recon as a lance, we move together. So we just go to configure all, start of game. Okay, we didn't change anything else. We were just looking at stuff. So we should be good to go. All right, uh, we lose initiative again, um, which is fine. I mean, honestly, would have been a little upset if we had won the initiative this time because I'm not trying to give myself an unfair advantage. Um, Let's go ahead and start with the wasp and see if maybe we can get some visibility on anything and from there try to form a plan. Now the wasp, we lose contract points if he dies, so he is not going to be a very active participant in this battle. Uh, very good chance he's just going to jump into these woods and then just spend like the rest of the battle just hopping between here and here, keeping his evasion up. Uh, that does not tell us anything we didn't already know. Uh, so, uh, I guess the next step, since we're going in blind, um, go ahead and commit our slowest boys to the central area. Um, the mud is gonna slow us down, so by the time we really join the battle, we'll probably be looking at uh, having LRMs and large lasers and whatnot uh, covering this area, which I'm fine with. Um, Hoser, I mean, if there was a slightly more clear path, I would like to kind of come in and like pinch her on that middle. Um, we can. I think we can go ahead and, and try to pinch her in with the archer. Um, but um, with the awesome, it's just so slow. I really want to not be wasting any movement points trying to get to the middle of the field. Uh, okay, The Orion, I think we can put him over here and he can make his way up here to try to catch that southern flank. Um, and then we can also have the uh, the Mark II Archer come in and try to cover that with the LRMs. 
All right, we've one initiative for round one. Uh, nothing else is changed. All right, so let's just go ahead and start advancing. And it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like we're looking at about 14 hexes of visibility, which is not bad. And I just realized that um, <laughs> I was talking about not putting any obstructions in front of the awesome or the, or the stalker so they can get there as fast as possible. But because every hex is two movement points, an obstruction actually wouldn't slow him down because it only costs him the surplus. So I could have done something differently. Um, I'm not upset or anything. It's just something to be aware of. Um. And then the wasp. Oh, I thought I counted that right. I guess not. Uh, but next turn, he'll definitely be able to get into that hex. So that's cool. Uh, no checks for the movement phase. Um, no targets. And you can always double check if this next target button down here is, is grayed out. That means you literally do not have eyes on anything that you're legally allowed to target. Because I do have friendly fire turned off because I can't think of a single reason to ever turn friendly fire on. When would you ever want to shoot your own mech? It just does not make sense to me. For some games and some situations in other games, I can see that being a thing, but not this one. Nope. And we still don't have any targets? <laughs> okay, yeah, granted. Um, but would he do it with PPCs or would he just pull out his sidearm? Oh, a skulker tries to break free of the terrain. We don't know if they were successful or not, but we do know that they were stuck. Uh, oh, they're all clustered up over here. That is... Wolverine, Scorpion, Saracen, Vulcan, Wasp, Harasser, Wasp, Trebuchet, and Wolverine. So they are uh, very much clustered up together. And speaking of artillery... <laughs> uh, Alright, so... So yeah, speaking of artillery, that would be a perfect opportunity. And speaking of PPCs... Uh, we might actually have... nope. Even with extreme range, that's still not quite there. All right. Uh, Lions, maybe? Ooh, at extreme range, yes. But, uh, oh. Still not visible to that guy. So. Okay, that trebuchet, definitely our primary target. And it looks like someone is taking a shot on our wasp for getting out there in the front. But that's an autocannon two and it needs a 12 to hit. So I'm not especially worried about that. Uh, the good thing about having the wasp out front like that is that um, it did give us, you know, eyes on at least. So now we know where they are. That was a miss. Uh, didn't even start an ac accidental fire. Uh, everyone's basically at zero heat still. We have absolutely one initiative this round with a 12 plus a bonus of three. Uh, and now it starts making a little more sense to be perhaps somewhat cautious in how we proceed now that we're actually getting shot at. So. Wasp, full evasion, heavy woods, I think we're okay. Um, this is Frederick French. Can get eyes on this Wolverine. Uh, this Wolverine, which jumped five for a mod of three. It's a long range, so that's, let's see, Frederick is a four four. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight for range, nine, 10, 11 for your movement, 12 if we walk, 13 if we run. 
Alternately, the Saracen also has a mod of plus three, and we're also shooting through woods. So we're basically not going to have a shot this turn no matter what we do. So I'm going to go ahead and just try to get into these woods as quickly as possible. Uh, Hoser, however, might actually have a chance of hitting because he's a 3-4 pilot. So this is 7 for range, 8, 9, 10 for their movement, 11 for ours. Yeah, it's time for Hoser to slow up and start using his range to his advantage. Uh, the shots aren't going to be great for the first couple of turns, but after the first couple of turns, um, once they start getting a little closer, because we're not getting closer at one hex a turn. <laughs> uh, this is the Stalker. This is Murdoch, who has a 2-3 piloting in gunnery. Um, so it's going to be sixes at long range. Seven, eight, nine for his movement. Ten for the woods. Eleven. We'll take a we'll take a couple of eleven shots on that Saracen. Maybe we'll get lucky and immobilize it or something. Uh, other archer. This is the Mark II. So this is the one that can't continually move and fire. Um, so probably what we're gonna do with this archer is camp him somewhere and just lob LRMs all over the place. Alright, so, Saracen on 14s, everything else is a red X, except this guy, and that's going to be a 15. Yeah, no shots there. Over here we've got 11s, and no reason not to. Or actually, we've got a, oh, outside of range. Yeah, uh, we'll go ahead and take the 11s, because that's the only target he can see at least. Um, This is a 15 there, or a 13, so no shot. We've got 13s with the lasers. Oh, I forgot to account for his specialization, so that's going to be what, 12s? 13s. 11s. I'm not going to say the ammo is free, but it's not expensive enough to be worth uh, considering when we're deciding whether or not we're going to shoot someone. Shooting them is definitely the more important thing. Uh, we've got 14s there, so nothing doing. And then of course you have uh, 17s. Uh, as suspected, no one rolled any higher than an 8, so everything missed. Uh, everyone's still at zero heat. No one's no one's exceeding their heat capacity. We've won the initiative. Everyone's still at full BV. Um, if we go here, well, first things first. Let's go ahead and sync our initiative with this wasp. Uh, let's see what they do next. So it looks like the trebuchet and the wolverine have gone, the scorpion and the skulker. The skulker is still stuck, so it sucks to be him. Um, go ahead, take some cover there, and dare them to close with us. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and have French run this turn, and then next turn he should be able to get into this hex, which should give him a pretty good field of fire. I like that. Uh, Hoser is going to hang back and take some probably low probability shots, but I mean, I feel like the low probability shots are generally worth taking, just on account of, like, there is always that chance that you'll hit. And then Vernita. All right, yeah, Skulker is still stuck. He rolled a two, he needed a six. And that's an interesting pair of modifiers. Uh, you know, Skulker tries to break free of the terrain, needs a six. Base six, plus one for mud, minus one for mud. 
I'm not real clear on why that worked out. Um, probably, I'm guessing it's a minus one um, modifier for trying to get yourself unstuck from woods or from mud, but then being in mud gives you a plus one modifier to piloting rolls, is my guess. Uh, so we've got 12s on the locust. Uh, and 14s. Uh, so I know I said that money was not a concern when it comes to firing ammo, but this archer only packs enough ammo for 12 rounds of continuous firing, so I think I'm going to hold off on the 12. Not because of sea bills or anything like that, but just because I don't want to run out <laughs> when I have a target uh, uh, better than 12. Uh, we've got, looks like 10s on this Wolverine, or impossible on the trebuchet, because he's because uh, of the rain. So yeah, we'll take the 10s, but not the 14. Uh, we've got a 13 on the Wasp. So it's going to be a 13 for all of these guys as well. Or we've got 11s here. Yeah, I think 11 is our best shot, and we'll go ahead and throw in some LRMs. Uh, maybe if we get really, really super lucky, we'll be able to knock that Wolverine down. I doubt it, but, you know, uh, if I've got the same probability of hitting the Wolverine versus a different target, I might as well stack them. All right, so we've got 12s with the larges. And 12 with the LRMs. Uh, Yeah, we'll build up one heat for that. When I say one heat, um, I know it says 25 out of 20. There's that four point bonus that we mentioned earlier. Now, the Mark II Archer has 12s. Uh, also has 12s on the Saracen, which I think, I mean, as long as we're trying to get lucky, we might as well try to get really lucky. <laughs> Uh, and then our friendly wasp buddy has uh, 16s, so nothing doing there. All right, miss, 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 miss. Um, for a second I thought I saw a hit, but I was wrong. Everybody missed. Uh, nobody's building up any heat except for the stalker at one. Uh, we have one initiative, although notably only because of our bonus. Uh, Alright, so French would like to get into, I think, medium laser range for something, or at the very least seven hexes, which is ideal range for those LRMs. Um, and then if, if worst comes to worst, we can always back up <clears throat> into this hex on a walk. That's two, four. You can walk, you know, four hexes, four, four MPs backwards. Um, so about this trebuchet. How far did you move? You moved, you jumped five for a mod of three. So that's three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Minus two for specialized, so that's eight. If we just stand there and shoot that trebuchet, and that is very attractive because we don't need to be any closer, and all moving will do is mess up our shot. Um, uh, let's go ahead and. Get this guy out of the way real quick. He's all, I'm just here as an observer. Um, so the Orion has a pretty decent shot on this harasser at a plus four mod, granted, but um, yeah, we'll try to land some LRMs on that harasser. Wait, that harasser has 
Just a single LRM10? Yeah, we, we can deal with that. Uh, let's see, for Nitta. Sorry, I just. The chat just says, Welcome to the chat room. I'm like, oh, I've been here. <laughs> Don't know if you knew that. <laughs> All right. Uh, now Murdoch and Stalker does not have LOS on the Wolverine. Uh, this one's the Trebuchet, right? Yes, that is the Trebuchet. So that's extreme range for the lasers, long range for the LRMs. Um, yeah, likewise, I don't see any reason to try to get one or two hexes closer. We're not going to be evasive, and um, it's not going to change our, our range bracket. It's just Twitch playing games with you, yeah. Um, so the Skulker finally breaks free of the mud on round five. <laughs> so he was stuck, I guess, for four rounds. Um, and then the Harasser sideslips while flanking into one hex. Um, and then it does it again. You know? But unfortunately, none of those hexes were prohibited terrain, which would have been lovely. So it looks like the Locust and their Saracen are coming up here to try and flank. Got tens on the Saracen, tens on the Locust. Uh, lasers, we've got twelves. 13s there, 14s, 12s. Uh, it looks like. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take a couple of 10s. Uh, it's not likely to hit, but again, you know, you miss all the shots you don't take. So we've got 9s on the trebuchet. I thought it was 8s. Did I miss? Oh, I, I forgot the rain. Yeah, the rain is just adding one to everything. So that's nines and a 13. Also a 13. All right, we'll take three nines. Um, let's see. Yeah, you were going to try to take out this harasser. You've got a 10. We'll do a couple of 12s and an 8. Should work out nicely. Um, actually, there is no reason not to fire the SRMs. If I do get that 12, I want as many locations as possible to try to crit out that, that mobility. And also, uh, we've got so much ammo, I wouldn't mind burning some of it, uh, just because I have had mechs in the past survive uh, SRM4 ammo explosions because they were down to the last three rounds. Um, so we've got 10s on the Harasser, or 11s on the Trebuchet. Let's go ahead and take those, and also 11s because we're not specialized. And again, that leaves us at one heat. It's not Again, likely to hit, but any damage that we can do to that trebuchet early on is for the best. Um, we've got nines on the harasser and thirteens, yeah. So it's just the nines, heat neutral, works for me. Seventeens uh, on the only thing in range. So, all right. So uh, the archer, and this is uh, this is French uh, in the Mark III. Uh, does manage to land 12 SRMs on the Saracen, uh, costing it half of its movement points and adding a total of plus four to his uh, driving skill rolls from now on. So we can expect him to be doing more side slipping. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, his left side is down to 15 armor, two to the turret. Eh. Uh, Locust missing on a 10. Uh, Hoser landing a PPC on the Trebuchet's left torso, down to five armor there. 
uh, Wolverine firing on, that's uh, French again in the Mark III, missing with everything on 11s. The Orion hitting the Harasser with six of his LRMs uh, to the rear and the front, immobilizing it twice. So that Harasser is going down very shortly. Uh, Vulcan landing an autocannon two hit on the right torso, and this is the archer that is it Vernita? Yeah. Let me see the Orion. We've got Vernita and Petra, right. Um, Murdoch missing on 11s, no big deal. Uh, the Saracen did land six LRMs on um, French, that's five to the right arm, and one that would have been the head, but we have edge, uh, and we still have an edge too, so that's cool. It wasn't even our last point. Um, and one point to the center torso. Um, missing the harasser on nines, and then the harasser missing us on eights. So, cool. Uh, no physical attacks, and the wolverine is already at nine heat. Wow. Uh, we've won initiative again, which is nice. Absolutely lovely. Um, and now that we're kind of getting into a bit more of the fray, initiative I think becomes slightly more important at this point. Um, let's check, is that woods in the way? Line of sight is not blocked, seven hexes. So if we go here, that gives us three, Four, five, six, seven for range, eight, nine, ten for jumping, eleven for the rain, uh, minus four for immobile. So that would give us seven. So that wasp actually might be able to, you know, accomplish something. Uh, the Mark II archer. Uh, we already know you're standing still because you don't have the heat capacity to do much else. Um, Murdoch. All right, so at this point, it really looks like they're trying to push this, this north passageway pretty hard. Um, where's the trebuchet? He's on the other side of these woods. He's going to be real hard to get a shot on. But let's see if maybe anywhere we can go helps. <laughs> There, no, 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 oh, okay, we can see it from there, so if we do that, it's, what, looks like 17 hexes, so it's going to be extreme range for the large lasers, but only long range for the LRMs. Um, I mean, it gives us a shot. It's not going to be a great shot. Um, and then, of course, Hoser, from where he's standing, should also have a shot. And let's go ahead and maximize those odds by standing still. Uh, let's see. The Orion. Honestly, I kind of feel like we can start advancing out of these woods. We've got the heat capacity, unlike the Archer Mark II. Um, yeah, I think it's worth taking the, the penalty to go ahead and start trying to maneuver up to counteract that northern push they're making. And last but certainly not least, Frederick French is now being flanked by a locust and a wolverine. And this wolverine has the four, five pilot. Uh, we're also dealing with a Saracen, a pair of wasps, and that trebuchet with the three, three pilot that we're desperately trying to take out. If we, I mean, that gives us exactly seven hexes to the trebuchet at a walk through one woods and the rain. Uh, it's still, 
pretty defensive. We're both shooting through this woods, but he's shooting into this one, and we're not. Uh, also, he probably jumped. Yeah, so that's going to be a plus three mod to his attack. Uh, the Skulker <laughs> bogs down again. Man, that thing is just having so much trouble joining the fight. Um, all right, starting with the big punchy guns, we've got tens. Uh, is there anything? Ooh, hold on. Um, where do we want to hit this harasser? We are shooting this harasser in the rear, if we can, and everywhere else if we can't. So, one more time, we'll take the 10s on the trebuchet, and then maybe not the large, nope, uh, larger nothing. I mean, we stood still, so it's not going to build up any heat. Alright, who else is shooting at the trebuchet? I think... Got 13s there. We've got 11s there. Uh, I think the Orion's probably going to be shooting at the Skulker, uh, uh, actually, because it's a pretty easy shot, relatively speaking. Uh, it's going to be the Autocannon and the LRMs. And then we might as well add a couple of medium. At least one medium laser to this to the harasser, and we also know that uh, our wasp is shooting the harasser because he literally doesn't have anything else really. Uh, back to the trebuchet, we've got tens, and what's that going to be? Fourteens. Yeah, so we'll take a couple of tens. Uh, we do have an 11 there. I mean, why not? We've got the heat. Right. And, oh yeah, Murdoch was also shooting at the trebuchet. We had 13s versus also 13s. Wow, I thought I had a better shot than that. Um, I mean, the harasser is a really low priority target now. I'm pretty much sure he's dead. Uh, the Skulker, however, has a bit more armor and isn't permanently disabled. He's just or, uh, stuck. Do you mind? Thank you. But it's outside of visual range. So um, it looks like Murdoch actually is not going to be able to take any shots at all this turn except the Harasser. Uh, so we might as well Oh, threes. And that should be heat neutral. Uh, we've got sevens there. We've got nines there. And the Saracen, I think, is the bigger threat. It's also the harder shot. Is it the Skulker? Which has just a medium laser. Yeah, the Saracen is definitely the bigger threat. So we'll go ahead and take a pair of nines on that. All right. Hoser missing on tens, no big deal, but he does get the kill on the Harasser, um, which, like I said, I knew it was dead already. Uh, the Locust missing Mark three on a nine, gets a seven. <laughs> um, the Orion shooting at the Skulker and missing also hits the Harasser in the back killing the dead horse uh, Wolverine on the Archer needs a 12 and misses Wasp on the Harasser hits it in the rear and left side the Vulcan needs an 11 and misses um, the Mark III Archer needed 10s on the Trebuchet and 11s on the Saracen the Trebuchet needed a 9 to hit the Archer Saracen needed 11s and 10s to hit the archer. Stalker on the harasser gets the kill with the fuel tank explosion. Uh, so that's cool. Um, 
And then the Mark II Archer does not hit the Saracen. So, uh, so that's cool. Two kills this turn. Um, Mark III Archer's at two heat. Everyone else is running pretty cool. The Wasp actually built up the point of heat because he did a full jump and Alpha Strike. Uh, there are, um, Wolverine dropped one point of heat, but he's still going to be taking targeting penalties next turn. Uh, we've won the initiative. Um, and we're down a quarter of a percent. They're down 8%. So we're actually almost a third of the way done with reaching our objective already. Uh, because we are only trying to kill 25% of them. Uh, this wasp is actually not a terrible shot. I mean, we could kind of come up in here and maybe try to start taking shots at that skulker. Just to free up anyone else from having to try to do that. So sure, why not? Um... very carefully put the stalker where he could see through these woods down this line at the trebuchet. Um, but that trebuchet is not going to stand still. So if he goes even just a little bit to either side, we're not going to have a shot from where we are. Uh, we're also not going to have a shot from there. Uh, let me, let me hold off on that until I know where he's going to go. Meantime, this Orion is going to 8 hexes from the Saracen, 10 hexes from the Wolverine. Yeah, I like that position. It's at least a little bit um, evasive as well, which is nice. Oh, he moved. Oh, he's there. Oh, is he challenging the Orion to a duel? That's what it looks like. Uh, let me see my range brackets. Actually, I don't need those because I've got those in color. Um, so that's, again, long range and extreme range for the larges and the LRMs. Going to hit that guy eventually. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go ahead and, and just camp out for, for ideal accuracy. And then that's also looks like long range, yeah. I feel a little bit bad for like just camping out and relying on my superior gunnery skills and letting them come to me, but honestly not that bad. Uh, meanwhile, Frederick is getting swarmed with bugs. Uh, he's also exactly 7 hexes from that trebuchet, which has 30 LRMs. So... I mean, I kind of... <laughs> I know it's not a very complicated strategy, but it seems to be working. <laughs> Yeah, they do. Um, I think what I'd like to do with French is just hang out where I am, take the seven hex shot on the trebuchet with the LRMs, maybe a couple medium lasers at one of these wasps and then get in some punches or kicks. So, like I don't really want him to be that range from the trebuchet on a defensive, from a defensive standpoint, but I honestly can't think of anywhere I'd rather him be right now, so. And the Skulker again cannot break free. Alright. Starting with the big guns to maximize those crits. We've got nines. Two, three. And if we get really lucky, maybe one of those will hit his left torso again and go internal or something. Uh, Orion also has a 10 point punch on an 11, granted. Um, ten and uh, actually, how 
has a better shot on the Saracen, even with the secondary target modifier. Uh, so yeah, we'll lob some SRMs at that for a couple points of heat, no big deal. Uh, Archer 9's on the trebuchet, even at ideal range, that's kind of lame. Uh, Locust. Ooh. Only with our left arm. It is an 8. It has the low profile, so if we hit with an 8 or a 9, we're only doing 2 points of damage. Or we've got 9s on this wasp. We can keep our hands free, and we do full damage, even if we only roll a 9. Sounds like a plan. We've got, again, 11s. And 11s. So, not ideal, but um, I feel like if this becomes a war of attrition, and it is, uh, I feel like we're probably going to come out on top just because uh, we did start with a stronger force. And we do have, you know, generally better targeting because we're getting down into the 7, 8, 9 range, and they're still, I feel like, mostly in the 10, 11, 12 range. Uh, we've got sevens on the skulker we'll take it building up two points of heat on a wasp all right the skulker shooting at the wasp starts a fire in our hex <laughs> what are the odds needed a needed a three or below needed a ten or above gets a three and a twelve uh, we did land one of the ppcs on the trebuchet not the left torso but the right leg it's something uh, Wolverine missed the Orion on 11, Locust hitting the Archer in the leg with a medium laser. Uh, Orion missing on 11s and 10s, Wolverine missing on 12s. Um, <clears throat> the Wasp on the Archer on 9s missing, Archer on the Trebuchet hits with 12 LRMs, so that is going to force a PSR at the end of the, the phase. That's 10 points to the center torso and 2 to the right arm. Nice. Uh, Wasp at the Archer on 9's and missing. Vulcan on the Archer on 10's and missing. Uh, Stalker on 11's didn't hit anything. The Trebuchet is shooting at the Orion. I really thought he was going to fire some LRMs at our Archer. Lands one medium laser to the left torso. Is that the first damage we've taken this mission? No, I think we took two earlier from something. Um, Archer missing the trebuchet on tens. Saracen landing two SRMs on the Archer's right arm, down to 13 armor there, and six LRMs to the center and right torso. Uh, the Wasp on the Skulker is now stuck permanently because it took you know, a medium laser to the left side and an SRM to the front, both of which, either one of which would have immobilized it. Uh, trebuchet needs a 5, gets a 5, so close, but, and then do we go for the kick on a 6, or a pair of punches on 7s? So let me just see what his armor situation looks like. I mean, 7 points to the head would destroy it, 7 points to the right arm would destroy it, Seven points to the torso would go internal. Then again, a kick to either leg would absolutely cripple it. So with a kick, we've got a 72% chance of crippling it, whereas with a punch, we've got a two 58% chance hits. And either one that hits has, I'd call it about a one in three chance of either hitting the head or that right arm. Um, we'll go for the kick. 72% is, is strong odds, I like that. Uh, the Wasp kicks the Archer in the leg for four. Archer returns the favor, 14 to the left leg, destroyed. Uh, five damage to the left torso, leaving it with one armor. And he is going nowhere after this and might, in fact, just punch out. Uh, Archer needs a 3 to stay standing, succeeds. Oh, um, I remember a week or two ago I had mentioned that I wasn't sure how the, uh, the stable quirk had affected my targeting, my, uh, piloting rolls, and I figured it out. It is actually only effective against physical attacks. So, that's one mystery solved. 
Uh, wasp falls down, takes two to the center torso, needs a 12 to avoid damage, and then a three to stay conscious. Uh, Orion is at two heat, Wasp is at two heat, everyone else is looking good. The Wolverine's down to seven, so he's not taking targeting penalties anymore at least. Oh, Fire, fire in Hex 3016 was started this round. Fire at Hex 3016 goes out due to weather. So that was short lived. Uh, we've won the initiative, and they're down 13% of their BV. So we're about halfway there already. Good deal. I mean, I was talking about, you know, just taking out that trebuchet would just about do it, but we might end up not having to do that. Um, all right. If we do that, we're evasive. We're at a good range from the Skulker. We're at a good range from the Wasp. Uh, I'm fully expecting the trebuchet to probably jump in behind us if we do that, but we've got strong back armor. And that would put him right in front of like a couple of our bigger guys. So yeah, let's go ahead and advance the Orion first. Uh, the Scorpion here uh, cruised one hex. So if we do that. It's not in the woods, but you know, it's uh. Ooh. Just made myself a target for that Wolverine. Might have been a mistake. Hopefully not. Um, kind of want to save that and see what the archer does. Or the trebuchet, I mean. Uh, let's go ahead. I mean, I don't want to run. I know that. The question is, is it worth taking a plus one penalty to advance the hex? Or do we just stand here? Because, I mean, technically that trebuchet could just jump out of sight and leave us with no targets at all. Which would not be a bad move on his part. It would effectively neutralize what amounts to my biggest guns for the entire turn. Oh. Oh, the trebuchet went back up here where we can see him through these woods down that line. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll stand still and take a long range shot with the LRMs and the large lasers. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, is it? I just, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it's worth it to leave cover. Building up heat, taking targeting penalties. I mean, with jump jets, we're never going to catch up to them. So. <clears throat> and last but certainly not least, Frederick French, the archer. Looks like you have a couple of targets. Wouldn't mind finishing off this wasp. He's still worth 200 points. Not a lot, but the thing about finishing off the wasp is we can just stand here and kick him while we're still shooting at other stuff. All right, Skulker tries to break free of the terrain and succeeds. Um, it's a mobile though, isn't it? So even though he's not stuck anymore, he's still not going anywhere. Um, Wasp trying to stand up on one leg, needs an 11, almost gets it, takes two to the arm, second consciousness check, needs a five, gets an eight. Elevens, okay. it's not great. Um, alternately... Hmm. 
we hit that left side twice, or really anywhere twice. On fives versus elevens, yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and finish off the Skulker, the Skulker, because I don't think we'd hit anything on elevens. Uh, let's see, we've got Ryan has a seven on this here Wasp versus eleven eight. Yeah, we'll take the seven and I guess nine and another nine. And a six, we'll build up three heat. Four heat, my bad. All right, so we've got tens on him. It's not likely to hit, but you know. Oh, the specialization, I was like, how is, how is that possible? <laughs> but it is, it absolutely is. Um, nines versus, ooh, we've got eights on that Saracen. Staying heat neutral. Now this guy, we've got eights there. Skulker is already most likely dead. So we've got eights there, which are pretty likely to crit or sevens. And the, L the SRM is in the leg, so the SRM with the Vulcan is not an option. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll, we'll take the lower probability shot with the laser on the Scorpion, because it also lets us shoot the SRM at the Scorpion, and hopefully we can immobilize it or something. And I've been putting this off, but... So many good targets. Everyone's just kind of clustered up over here. Um, that's 11s also. Um, okay, it's time to rearrange these. Let's go lasers first. Um, yeah, we're gonna go eight, 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 seven. Is it worth four heat for another seven? On a guy that's likely already dead, yeah. Yeah, this battle's wrapping up. I'm not too worried about building up excessive heat right now. All right. So the Scorpion firing at the Wasp does land three SRMs to the right torso, going critical in the left arm, and then another four to the right arm, center torso, right leg. Um, not too worried about that because we're not paying for those repairs. Uh, the awesome on the skulker hits the front and the left side, but does not get the kill. Uh, I kind of thought that was a sure thing. <laughs> Shows what I know. Uh, Wolverine at the wasp hitting with three more SRMs to the center torso, right leg, left torso. So far, not quite internal. Now the one on the right leg and the zero on the right arm. All right. Uh, Locust hits the archer in the left torso with a medium laser. Uh, no big deal. Orion hitting the wasp in the left torso with an auto cannon. Um, not quite taking it out. Uh, and then uh, six LRMs at the Saracen to the front, immobilizing it. Nice, very nice. Uh, Wolverine on the Orion, missing on nines and elevens. The wasp at the archer on a ten misses. The stalker on tens and twelves does not connect. Uh, Wasp on the Archer hits a medium laser to the center torso. Uh, Vulcan at the Wasp on 8s, 10s, and 12s doesn't connect with anything. Um, Archer Mark II at the Saracen hits 6 LRMs to the right side. Uh, and the Trebuchet at the Orion missing with 3 medium lasers on 10s. Uh, the Wasp on the Scorpion on 8s. Well, I guess we should have shot the uh, the Vulcan because we needed a 7, and that would have connected. So, you play the odds, sometimes the odds play you. 
Uh, Saracen at the Archer hits with two SRMs to the right arm and the Setter Torso, uh, costing us our last point of edge. And then six LRMs to the arms. Uh, Archer at the Saracen hits the right side, immobilizing it. And it was already immobile, right? Uh, yeah, that was the Saracen that was immobile. Um, and then looks like 12 LRMs to the turret in the front, immobilizing it some more. <laughs> uh, Archer did take 20 damage this turn. Needs a 5, gets a 5, and the Wasp needs a 6, gets a 7. So apparently we're getting a little more beat up than I had realized. I didn't think the Archer had taken 20 points of damage. Uh, kick the Wasp in the left arm, destroying it, transferring into the left torso, destroying it, and transferring into the center torso, which... Um, has how many points of structure? Uh, has six points of structure, so nine more points to kill that wasp. Uh, Archer is at four heat, Orion is at four heat, this is acceptable, wasp is at three heat, no big deal. Wolverine's at ten, Wolverine's at nine, so they're both taking movement and targeting penalties. We have one initiative and they're down to 83-ish percent so we only need to do eight more to call it. And what was this? Uh, okay, the wasp is immobile, abandoned unit. Uh, that is going to go to um, Wyvern. Is going to get that kill. Uh, I don't think I need to write that down. Uh, it's the first one of the battle. All right, uh, this friendly wasp, if I can click on him, kind of needs to get out of dodge he's in pretty rough shape especially that right arm right leg is rough torso is rough so yeah we're gonna try to be about as evasive as possible and still have a shot on this skulker maybe we'll get the kill um so this saracen now uh not what I meant to do. Um, still has, what was it, an LRM and three SRMs, but he's immobile, badly damaged, and turret locked. So, uh, well, the turret lock isn't going to have much of an effect because we're all in his front arc. Um, I do think it's time for our Mark II archer to come out of hiding and try to join this fracas. You will um did you just you just uh jumped five for mod of three i mean if you're gonna get within kicking distance i don't see why i shouldn't just kick you uh it's not evasive as if we were doing a run but honestly who am i trying to be evasive from the trebuchet here is really the only major player left on the board aside from these two wolverines and the orion has the armor they can take it trebuchet jumped in the water did he do that on purpose oh yes oh yes i'm going to go for the head kick <laughs> because why wouldn't i um not only that but that also looks like that is medium range for the PPCs. Uh, this is going down this turn. Oh, it's going so down. Uh, Locust trying to come up on my archer ran six for a mod of two. Uh, let me just get a visual on this. Uh, I mean, seven hexes is not great for the medium lasers and the SRMs, but for the LRMs, it's pretty okay um or we could hang out at eight hexes or even nine hexes i mean it's long range for the medium lasers but that's still not a bad shot i don't think yeah uh murdoch is gonna stand still okay yes uh wasp 1a number two uh ejected by wyvern uh, trebuchet needs a 
two for entering water gets a four. All right. Um, let's see here. Start with, of course, the big guns. Uh, we're shooting at the trebuchet. Need a three for gunnery skill, plus one for the rain is four. Minus two for the weapon specialist is two, four for medium range, five for the woods. That is an amazingly good shot. We are going to wreck his world. And I'm honestly tempted to throw in a medium laser just to build up a little bit of heat because why not? <laughs> Um, yeah, you're not shooting at him, you're not shooting at him, you're maybe shooting at him on tens, uh, sixes, thirteens, twelves, or fives. Um, you know, let's go ahead and try and knock out this skulker real quick. Build up a couple points of heat, no big deal. Um, all right, you sevens versus threes. I mean, I got hit, I moved into this position so that I could kick him in the head for 14 points of damage, but the lasers and whatnot are definitely going to be more effective against the Saracen. And in fact, Nines on the loss, so threes. I, I just can't not turn down such an easy shot as a three. Well, I'll throw in a seven for four heat. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I, I wish I hadn't said anything. So we've got eights on the Wolverine, which is less than ideal. Build up four heat, firing all of the short range stuff. Uh, Stalker was coming over here, or was standing still to get a good shot on this locust. We've got sixes there. Right now, I'm not actually used to the the regular stalker anymore. I'm used to my modified stalker. So let me just uh, figure this out. That's twelve. That's eight. That's twenty. So we can do. One large and on eights. Yeah, I'll take all four of those. Then I'll take on a 10. I don't think I want to build up four points of heat for a 10. But then again, I will build up four points of heat for an eight. Those LRMs. So that should leave us just under a movement penalty next turn. And then this wasp here on 11s, sure. Because, well, hold on. Uh, what did you need on the skulker again? Show me. Fives. And you've got how much armor? Not much. And the wasp needs fives versus 11s. Uh, yeah. We'll go ahead and we'll target that left side um, on fives for four points of heat, which I honestly think is the most heat I've ever seen built up on a wasp that hadn't like taken an engine hit. All right, so the Skulker hits the Orion in the left leg with a medium laser. <clears throat> Hoser at the trebuchet hits the right torso twice with PPCs. It does not hit with the large laser or the medium though. Um, I'm actually really glad I didn't end up getting like a leg hit or something. That would have been wasteful. Um, oh, I just realized if I hit him too hard, he'll fall down. It'll breach his armor with the water, but then I won't get to kick him in the head. I want to kick him in the head. <laughs> Uh, the Scorpion at the Orion missing on 10s, the Wolverine missing the Orion on an 11, the Archer getting the kill on the Skulker, so I guess the Wasp probably should have fired at the, uh, the Vulcan. Wouldn't have hit, but, I mean, we'll see. Uh, Locust at the Archer hitting with a medium laser to the right torso, two machine guns to the left leg. 
Uh, other Wolverine at the Orion. Hits a medium laser to the center torso. Five SRMs. Large leg to the left arm. Um, the Archer at the Saracen. Hits it in the front turret, left side, and turret, but doesn't quite get the kill. Um, yeah, down to two armor on the turret. Uh, the Vulcan at the Orion, missing on 9s and 7s. The Orion, missing the Wolverine on all of those 8s, sadly. Um, the Trebuchet at the Orion, hitting the left leg and left torso with medium lasers. Um, missed the LRM-15 on a 6. Uh, the Stalker at the Locust, hitting the left torso with the large laser. Glancing blow with the medium laser to the right torso, medium laser to the left leg. Uh, glancing blow with the LRM-10 hits with three missiles to the head, so didn't quite penetrate anywhere. The left torso is down to zero armor, and the wasp blowing the skulker up some more. Uh, oh, Orion took 20 points of damage. Needs a four, plus one for mud, plus one for damage, needs a six, gets a three. Takes five to the left torso, uh, three to the right arm, which would have been the right arm critical. Uh, and then we do avoid damage. Uh, trebuchet does not get knocked down, so uh, yeah. Kick him in the head on a five. I know it's not guaranteed, but man, it's. Uh, I'm not gonna try to kick on a, on a, on a nine. Uh, Wolverine kicks the Orion in the left arm for twelve, leaving us with six armor there. So we're actually kind of sort of almost in danger of, of going internal on one of our guys. Uh, Archer kicks the trebuchet in that damaged right torso, blowing the right arm off, transferring into the center torso, leaving him with five armor, but not knocking him down. Um, so Archer's at four heat, Orion's at four heat, Stalker's at four heat, Archer's at two heat, Wasp at four, Awesome's at three. So we're all warming up, but not too bad. Uh, Wolverines are at 8 and 6 heat. Everyone else is at 0. And technically, that is a win. Uh, I know when I do the, the after action report, it's going to ask me to list the ones that got destroyed. And I'm a little worried we didn't actually destroy a quarter of them. So I might have to fudge some things to, to get credit for the objective. But we have... Got them down below 75%. And we are, at that point, going to declare victory. They declared defeat, as is well and good. Uh, we have achieved victory conditions. We do save salvage because it's one extra click. Uh, so Frederick French did get one kill. Uh, Hoser got one kill. Uh, Vernita got one kill. So. All right, uh, yes, we did, because the winner controls the battlefield. Um, oh, it's probably this uh, previously damaged left arm is throwing this uh, this moderate damage here, because the Orion is the one that actually took the most damage. Um, but yeah, that went, I would say, exceedingly well. Uh, we took some, some armor damage, no big deal, but... Um, all right, so we can salvage, hypothetically, a couple million sea bills worth of stuff, roughly, because you know that should be about 17 each, and we're at 15 versus 19. Do we want a Saracen? Um, I mean, we might as well. It's basically free. And then the Wasp, I mean, it ejected. So there's no cockpit, that's a big money item. It really only has a right torso, a right arm, and a right leg, and they're all 20 tonners. Save it for a good mech. Um, okay, um, yeah, I, I'm not really interested in lost parts. They're, they're just too fragile. I'm not gonna be fielding one anytime soon. Um, the Saracen though, that's 100,000 sea bills for a working tank basically. So yeah, we're definitely going to do that. Uh, did we capture anyone? Nope. 
No one captured. No one killed. This was actually a very uh, low lethality mission. Uh, so the Wasp was French and the Archer. The Saracen was immobilized but never actually got killed. It was still shooting at us. Um, so yeah, uh, three kills from that mission. One to Fred Jones, one to Fred French, and one to Vernetta. Uh, oh, and we don't even have to, to fudge this at all. We do get the objective, we got the preserve, we got all of our objectives. So we should see this here, five turn into a six as soon as we click here. And yes, we got credit for that. So that was, that was not bad. Uh, nobody got injured. Very little in the way of repairs. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and since the Orion took the most damage, we'll make sure that he's in a transport bay. Uh, the stalker, stalker just needs LRMs. That is outstanding. That is great. Uh, Xanthos, we're still working on the Orion. Let's go ahead and have B do all the rest of the reloading because normally I would do that with a green tech, but our green tech is going to be tied up for a while. Um, so yeah, um, reconfigured the lands a little bit. Um, seems like it's working pretty well. Uh, I feel like we're concentrating more on like a long range kind of strategy, which. I'll admit, I, I personally have a little bit of trouble adhering to. I'm very much a, a get up close and kick them in the head kind of player. Um, but yeah, we've got, between the archers, we've got 80 LRMs. Um, with the stalker, we've got another 20. With the Orion, we've got another 10. Uh, the awesome has the three PPCs and the large laser. This is. This is a pretty good setup, I would say, particularly in such an open battlefield uh, where we can get those long range shots. Um, and even once they get up close, like, um, like the archers both have some medium lasers at least. The stalker has medium lasers and SRMs. The Orion has the autocannon and the lasers and the SRMs. And, um, I mean, even the, the PPCs only have a minimum range of three, and if it comes down to it, he also has all of these lasers. So, yeah, I'd say this is a really well-rounded, very um, versatile kind of lance that we've got going on here. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so it's not quite eight yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and start knocking out some of these repairs, but... Um, might make it to the end of the week in the next 10 minutes or so. But after that, um, you know, we'll call it a night. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy with the, with the way this has gone. So, uh, the angler, oh, hold on, uh, let me just double check. Status, okay. So the rifleman is still in the transport bay one. Um, who else are we using? Uh, not the Jenna, not the Hermes, not the Wolverine. Um, we've got the Orion in Bay 2. I mean, we might as well put both of the archers in Bays 3 and 4 because no one else needs it. <laughs> Alright, so that's 1 and 2. That should make all of these repairs go pretty, pretty easily. We've got, uh, I mean, it's only Tuesday. We literally have all the time in the world. Um, so how much actually armor? Do we need to worry about buying more armor? We've got 450 points on hand and 160 on the way and none on order. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead. 450 plus 160 is 610. Uh, we'll go ahead and buy another 400 parts, points. Uh, 
like so. All right, that should keep us going for a while yet. All right, so who needs the XP? That's Loney. Um, do I have how many minutes? Yeah, six. Six, nice. As long as I keep rolling these sixes, we're good to go. It's a seven now. And that's 160 minutes. So we'll give that to B. Lonnie, come on now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, we can give that to our veteran so we can work on getting an elite maybe at some point. And that is, I mean, uh, all right, so let's see. We've got some motive system repairs to do. And a turret lock that needs fixing. Um, actually, yeah, we'll have our veteran mechanic do that. And then I really don't want to take the chance of breaking that. I don't know how hard turret locks are to replace. Um, but we'll go ahead. Doodles. Yeah, we'll have Doodles do that. We'll have Maria Theresia Lavoisier, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't usually name my texts. They just didn't tend to become super numerous. Like, there's just so many of them that like just coming up with and remembering names for for all of your text can be a bit much. Come on now. Just cost us 36 points of armor. That's a bit much, don't you think? And then these little ones that Doodles can do today, we'll go ahead and have him do that was a little frustrating that didn't go as well as I was hoping all right so our veteran tech is available and we've got the time let's go ahead and get started on this gyro for the xanthos and we'll have this guy start working on that leg it'll take a couple of days but Maybe even locations. Do we maybe want another spare? I don't know. I don't. I don't think we need it. Um, oh yeah, XP. Did anyone earn enough to spend anything? No. Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, we were saving up for gunnery, was it right? Um, and then how close are we here? Pretty close. Frederick French is three XP from getting his gunnery up and becoming an elite and earning an ability. So that's cool. Um, other than that, it looks like looks like there's not much to do at this current juncture. Maybe order some more armor. Uh, wait, what? Oh. Uh, so yeah, we can. Amelia Pasek can take on a little bit more of a workload. No big deal. All right, maintenance on the Mark III Archer. Uh, so we've got right leg down to E. That's not great. Lower alarm act actuator up, right torso down to D. APC, stabilizer, left side, stabilizer, machine gun, machine gun. Uh, call 
that kind of a wash. Uh, next APC, stabilizer down, stabilizer down. And again, I don't worry too much about stabilizers because they're pretty easy to replace. And they don't cost literally anything. They are a zero C-bill cost item. Uh, however, the Hermes uh, lost some quality in the head, gained some quality in the life support and the lower arm actuator and the foot actuator. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that one is slated for... Why are we not mothballing that? All right. Um, oh yeah, uh, Kazuko has uh, quite a lot to do. Uh, finished mothballing the Atlas, um, doing the Wolverine next, then the Jenner, then the Hermes. All right, um, the Rifleman in six days. So cool. Um, oh, didn't go through this yet. Uh, right arm arrived, heat sink. Uh, ammo and armor. We fixed the gyro. That's good. Still working on the cockpit and the leg. No big, no, no problems there. Uh, we did fail to fix the motive system on the Saracen. Give that to Doodles. Sweet. That's just the cockpit and the leg that we can work on there. It's just the arm that we can't work on there. So I think All right. moving on. A uh, bunch of parts have arrived. We've got some LBX ammo. That's cool. Um, spare front left leg. We've got the cockpit in the Xanthos. We've got the leg on the Xanthos. I was worried about that. That eight had me, had me a little worried. Uh, Rifleman in five days. Hermes halfway mothballed. Wolverine and the Jenner next. Hermes was the last one I assigned. Why is it the first one getting done, I wonder? Is it like a last in, first out kind of situation? And moving on to Friday. Oh, Friday the 1st. So we got a bunch of XP. We've got a new contract market that we're not going to look at because our contract's not up for another month and a half. We have a lot of mechs to look at. <laughs> um, and we're actually doing pretty well financially. So... Ooh. Ooh, we can get another awesome for 5% off. I mean, we could afford it. We don't have anyone to drive it. Uh, we've got a Phoenix Hawk. I like Phoenix Hawks. Um, again, it's it's like the fire starter for me, um, you know, with the machine gun ammo and a couple other little tweaks, but it's it modifies really well. <clears throat> We've got a 4G Hunchback, that could be interesting. Uh, I'm a fan of the Hunchback and all its many variations. The Ostsol, which is the 60 tonner version. Um, <clears throat> this is the 4D, which I didn't remember it having rear facing medium lasers. I know there's an Ostsol variant that has an SRM4. I forgot there was one with rear-facing mediums. Uh, we've got a Shadowhawk 2H, which not my favorite 55 tonner. Crusader 3R, um, very potent mech. Uh, it does really, really well with double heat sinks. Um, got another Ostsol, another Orion. Wolfhound, I like Wolfhounds. Um, they're not quite as mobile as I would like a light mech to be, but they have really good firepower and very good armor coverage. Uh, guillotines are also very nice, very heavily armored. All the heat sinks in the world, 464, jump capable, and an array of medium lasers. Um, we, ooh, and that's 80% on cost. That's a 20% discount. That's... Normally a six million C bill mech for just under five. I am sorely tempted, actually. Um, 
honestly, the guillotine is tempting. The, the crusader is, is on my radar. Uh, the hunchback, maybe not at a markup. Uh, awesomes are great. We already have one, but you know, with one to spare. But a guillotine, that is interesting. I had mentioned earlier that I there are a lot of really good 70 tonners out there, like the Archer and the Warhammer. Uh, the guillotine is, is one of the ones that I consider to be <clears throat> right up there. Because, I mean, the only thing I think about the guillotine is that it does suffer from the nine hex issue, uh, and that only the large laser has any kind of range but with the jump jets it's a lot easier to get into that that close range especially in like tight urban or like very rough or watery kind of situations um, i'm gonna put a pin in that enemy morale is now invincible wow happen like we've been doing well we've got one defeat in how long and oh no oh that is bad that is very very bad when enemy morale becomes invincible they start attacking your base hard uh, and there's a special mission a special mission this month things are about to get a bit hotter than they were uh maintenance on the long tom uh, okay, machine guns up, nothing is down, good deal. Uh, hoser's ride maintenance, oh, we're just going to pretend we didn't see this. Oh my goodness, that is, oh, it's in the field? Oh man, oh man, oh man, that's, that's bad, that's bad, I hate leaving mechs in the field. It's not his fault. We literally left it in the bush. That's my fault. I've never seen enemy where I'll get invincible. <laughs> By that other awesome. Um, I mean... Um... This is this is gonna be rough. Uh, I mean, we did just earn six million in in, in monthly payout. <sighs> I mean, awesomes are good. <laughs> awesomes are good. But um, I think what makes the, the hosers awesome, especially good, is the double heat sinks and the lasers. Um, and I wouldn't mind having a backup awesome for when anything, God forbid, happens to the one we have. But it's going to take a little while to get this one into the same uh, configuration that one is in. Um, I just don't know how the enemy morale has gotten so high. Like, I know it's it's mostly random, and I know the morale was not you know bad before, but like we've got five victories and one marginal defeat this month. They sh there should have been a penalty on their roll, and they just cannot seem to. Uh, it's frustrating. That is, is really, really frustrating. Uh, so. I'm just looking at this because the difference between in the field and field workshop uh, is a plus two versus a plus one. Maybe their commissars arrived. Um, uh, the head would still be a C if it was in a field workshop. 
the that armor because a minus four is a is a uh, drops the, the quality whereas a minus three does not so anywhere where you see a minus four would be a minus three if it was in a field workshop so that's one that's two three four four five six items that would not have dropped in quality if we hadn't been just leaving it outside and the thing is that like literally like two days ago i had put it like where it was supposed to be it was just because we came back from that mission and it didn't automatically like go back to where it was uh, and so it just treats it as if it was in, in the trees you know in, in just outside for the entire month which <laughs> maybe they know how bad our techs are uh it could be could well be um Uh, that is super lame. I don't know how else to express my opinion on that. Um, I really want that guillotine. I would not mind having a second uh, awesome, especially if I could put double heat sinks in it. Um, we've still got a month and a half on this contract. And at that point, we'll have some free time, a little bit of breathing space. We'll be able to hire some more techs. Some more administrators will be able to maybe um, uh, maybe head to, I don't know, looks like Terra is not too far away. We'd be able to find some good stuff at Terra um, or uh, Galatea or Galatia, however you pronounce that. Uh, actually, what's this? This is, oh, that's where we are. I was like, why does that one have a double ring around it? There's Solaris. There are some planets around here where we could be able to find some really good equipment and, and technology um and galatia is also kind of like on the, that northern trajectory that we're we're planning on on uh doing um it has a lower tech world low industrialization is this not the same guy Transitioned into the mercenary star after the planet fell out of prominence. Oh, okay. I see. I see. We must be after um, outreach became more more popular than Galatea. So, but I mean, even still, they do have a good HPG. Um, okay. Well, I feel like I have belly ached quite enough about the situation um yeah this is all a's and b's but that's not in the right direction terra is closer and that's you know solid a's of course uh, <laughs> uh no there's you you guys are here to see me kick ass and take names you're not here to to listen to me whine and whinge about things I can't control although I'm thinking like even with GM mode like I can reset its um its quality level and just turn them all back into C's but I don't really feel like that's entirely fair because even if I had assigned this properly like there are still one two three four five six six things would have dropped quality even like if i had done things right i mean split the difference um i <laughs> just wanted a paint job not for them to ruin the parts um Damage for store unit, mob line. I, I am kind of torn. Like, I don't want to take penalties that 
I, I didn't intend to allow, but at the same time, at this point, there's no way to go back and fix half of it, but not the other half. So I think I'm just gonna just gonna take that lump on the head and try to recover from it. Um, and there'll be one more maintenance report between now and the end of the contract uh, on this mech. So it might drop in quality a little bit more because it most likely will be in a field workshop um, and with a veteran tech. Um, <laughs> um, I feel like it's not something that we can't recover from. I mean, it sucks and I wish I had done it right. But at this point, I think we're just going to have to just going to have to roll with it. Um, meantime, we did get some XP. So let me just look for like 10s and 20s and whatnot. We do have, yeah, you've got plenty of edge, so you don't need any more of that. Uh, doodles, no. Uh, regulars, regulars need 20. Uh, none of these guys broke any thresholds. So I'm not too worried about the infantry. Uh, we got, okay, so, oh, yeah, uh, I did almost forget we've got a new Saracen. Do we have, oh, we would, that would be on the personnel tab, because I'm an idiot. We have an elite driver, I don't remember where we picked him up from. Um, oh, yeah, um. So we can go ahead and put him on the Saracen. And since it's a hover vehicle, that's actually kind of important because they make more checks than, um, excuse me, they make more checks than non-hover vehicles do. They, you know, every time they flank and turn, they have to, to make a check. So uh, let me just check. Okay, that is actually a three crew, so it's not, fully combat ready because we need another gunner um that's something that we can well hold on do we have any gunners yeah we'll be able to fully crew it once we end this contract we'll have uh looks like one more driver three more gunners soldier some mech warriors, including a veteran. So that's cool. Uh, but that is still a month and a half away. Um, kind of getting ahead of myself here. Uh, as it is, I think... I'm going to sleep on the guillotine. Because I really want it. But at the same time, we don't really have anyone to pilot it at this point. Active. Um, well, I mean, I don't, I don't really... <sighs> we do actually have someone that could pilot it right now. We could actually. I mean, the rifleman is 60, the guillotine is 70, that's 130. We could do another. 150 and still be a heavy lance. That's yeah. You know what? You heard it here first. We're getting ourselves a guillotine. So that will be delivered in three days, and it's um. It might be going straight into mothballs until we have enough text to actually properly maintain some things. Um, also putting a second lance into this contract kind of midway through. Um, seems a little bit unnecessary because we're only required to have one lance in action. Um, so a second lance would increase our liability. We would be generating more missions per week, but we wouldn't be getting paid any extra for it. So. 
Um, I kind of want to hold off on putting together a second lance until it becomes um, a factor for generating a new contract because um, your, your contracts that are generated are based on your TO and E chart and right now we really just have the one lance. Um, so we would generate single lance contracts, but if we had two lances, then we would be generating two lance contracts, which pay significantly better. But uh, in the meantime, uh, let me go ahead and save this. And uh, yeah, we will go ahead and call that a night here. I appreciate everyone joining me tonight. Um, Thanks again for watching. Uh, like, comment, follow, subscribe, be part of the community. Um, hope to see you here next week. Uh, we have a Discord, if you're not aware. I know I talk about it all the time. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm happy to, to share this experience with all of you guys. I'm just having so much fun and enjoying playing this game that I love so much and, and just the the just being part of a community you know, is, is, is really what it is all about to me. So with that, I would like to wish you all a good night, a good weekend, a good next week until I see you again. Oh, uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow, HBS. Almost forgot myself. I'm so used to the one week, one, one stream a week thing. Uh, yeah. HBS Battletech next week or next, next night <laughs> tonight, uh, tomorrow night. So, um, Hope to see you guys there, and I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time tomorrow familiarizing myself with it so I'm not maybe quite so green. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you very much, and good night.